On the final part of my interviews with Kuro and Victor Takuna, Group Chief Executive, I asked him about the situation in Radstock and the Walnut Buildings, 32 apartments being demolished. This is not um, unusual in the sense, well, the, the, the conclusion that we needed to demolish was unusual, but it's not unusual that Cura will um, look at its, its different buildings and look at uh, what major improvements is needed. And, mm. and that's what happened. So we, we come to the conclusion that we needed to look at making some major improvements at Walmart buildings um, some time ago. Um, and... We begun doing some detailed surveys and inspections to understand the condition of the block. There were actually four. There are four blocks um, that comprise of the 32 homes that you say. Mm. Um, and as we started uh, doing those surveys, it became more and more evident that rather than a major uh, re- refurbish and improvement, which is what we were originally envisaging, that it that more and more stuff was coming out that we felt that it simply, we simply couldn't uh, do the work, A, I with the customers in situ, because there was so much work need done. And as, as we um, rehoused, and thankfully, Bath North East Somerset helped us with rehousing mm. the residents, and we've now moved all the residents out. They've all moved to, to new properties. Um, what we What became clear is that in order to respond to the scale of stuff that we were finding, it made more economic sense to knock down and start all over again. We just couldn't get it to an acceptable standard, we felt, by simply um, doing major improvement uh, to, the, to the block. So it's, it's um, unusual in the conclusion that, that we reached, mm. but it's not unprecedented. We've done, we, did, we, done, we did something similar, actually, next door to your studios, uh, well, we had St. Chad's Green, do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Where we had some um, very old sheltered housing that when we did the same analysis, mm. uh, we came to the conclusion that it would be best to uh, uh, replace those with what is now family homes, 16 uh, family homes there. So we do occasionally do it. It's, uh, as I say, it's not, it's not the norm, but um, from time to time, the conclusion is that it's better to... Um, start again and yeah. put in brand new housing that meets today's standards rather than the standards uh, when that, those buildings were, were built. And I think they were built, uh, gosh, it probably was Wonsdyke Council. That shows you how long uh, ago. And, then, <laughs> and it was, yeah. they, they were refurbished again in the mid-90s. But today's standards are so much uh, different mm. um, that when we started looking at just the scale of bringing up today to the set of the standards, we just thought it's best all round not to move people back in, but rather to start again. And that's that's where we've, we've reached. We will be demolishing um, the buildings, hopefully this financial year. So sometime between now and March, we mm. will demolish those buildings. We'll be consulting with local residents about what we do with um, the site that will be then cleared. And so we'll be, we'll, we, we do spend quite a lot of time trying to engage with the local community. So there's a sense of ownership about what we do with, mm. with, the, with the, the spaces. And, and so we will be doing that both with the local uh, parish council and, and, and also with local residents so that hopefully there's a sense of community ownership in the, in the proposals that might come out. It must be very difficult, of course, not just for the upset of a lot of people that have that have got to move their home, uh, but also, of course, I guess, as you've already mentioned, trying to find suitable alternative accommodation as well. Is it a very, it must be a very difficult process doing that sort of thing, just because you're dealing with people having to, having to move? Yeah, yeah, and we do this on a family by family basis. So, you know, what one family wants, um, may not be what another family wants. So you're working individually um, with families to make sure that the home they're moving to is, a, is both in a location they would like to move to and the type of housing they need. Hmm. Thankfully, um, in this case, um, all the families um, were happy to move. Uh, we found them suitable accommodation. Um, I know from personal experience, because I've had feedback from, from some of the families that, you know, they've been thrilled with the new home 
uh, they've got. They meant in some instances is brand new homes that we ourselves have built locally. Right. Hmm. So you know, in a sense, you know, you are working with individuals. You 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 know, this is a, a, a sensitive matter because, as I've said before, you know, home is so important. Hmm. Um, so we don't take these things lightly at all, um, and we don't we don't try and you know barge away into people's lives to try working with them. So that what they get um, is um, is better, if at all possible, than they might without otherwise get. get. And, and as I say, because of the condition of this this block and, and the standards that we need to get it to, I think the sense I get certainly is that everyone has welcomed the decision, despite it being quite obviously quite a, a radical one in many ways. Yeah. But I'm hoping what will come out is. Um, we the, the families that have moved will be settled into its permanent home they will enjoy, um, but also that what we put back here in this particular locality will be of ho- much higher quality. Okay, great. Thank you for that explanation. We will revisit that uh, as the consultation process develops. Uh, Victor, thank you very much for your time. We'll finish, if we may, on contact details. A lot of them for Curo. Which are the main ways or the easiest ways people can get in touch? Well, you can uh, go on our website. So that's um, obviously www.curo-group.co.uk. When you, when you enter that landing page, you will see there's so many ways to contact us. Mm. You can um, go on My Curo. There's a little tab uh, and register on My Curo, and then you can contact us and access services 24 hours a day. So you can order repairs and you can check your, um, your account 24 hours a day. Um, but if you want to call us, you can do so by uh, calling Bath 01225 366000 and we're open Monday to Friday to 8 p.m. or you can even text us on 0744-7990-1313 so that's 0744-799-0313